This is Daniela Camboni for Kiko News, and joining me on the spot today is Peter Hug. He's the director of Precious Metals Division for Kiko Metals. Peter, thanks so much for being with me today. You're welcome, Daniela. And we have some exciting news. Peter will be joining us every week for a brand new show called For Pete's Sake, where we get some insight into Peter's wonderful world of trading. Right, Peter? Yeah, right. <laughs> so what can we expect to hear from you? Well, basically my background is trading, so right. I'm going to uh, be giving you my interpretation of what the markets uh, are doing and uh, hopefully give you some insight as to which way I think the markets are going to move on a weekly basis. So for people who know you, Peter, like I do, I know you really speak uh, from the gut. You don't really hold any words back. Is that what you're going to be bringing to the table? Yeah, I mean, that's basically my personality. Yeah. I've been in the business since 1974. Uh, you know, I tend not to uh, be extravagant in my, in my prognosis of the market. Right. I just tend to call it the way I see it. So, Peter, let's look at the uh, markets uh, today. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw quite a move uh, today. What, what, what are your thoughts on what's happening? Well, I think the move should have come yesterday with what happened in Greece and France. Right. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, Greece does not have a government, and France has uh, moved to uh, a socialist government. Right. And, uh, you know, with what's happening in Greece, there's a, a fairly good shot that uh, Greece may have to leave the euro and there's been uncertainty. And uh, because of that, the stock markets both in Europe and the United States have uh, come under uh, selling pressure and uh, people are scared and they're moving into cash. And as a result, they're selling their precious metals. All right. Another question I had for you, Peter, was regarding those comments made earlier uh, by Warren Buffett's uh, right hand man about gold not being for civilized people. What, what do you think about those comments? Well, you know, I think, uh, quite frankly, I think uh, it was as outrageous a comment as, as the people on the other side of the fence that are calling for gold go to $10,000 an okay. ounce because they think the world is coming to an end. And, you know, gold is as good or a ba or bad an investment as anything else in the market. Uh, I mean, you know, Warren Buffett right now is saying buy Coca-Cola. Sure, if you bought Coca-Cola five months ago, it's a good investment. If you bought it 10 years ago, you still wouldn't be even. If you had bought gold 10 years ago, you'd be up five times. Uh, if you bought gold at 1900, it looks bad. Here at 1600, it looks better. It's all a matter of timing and every investment has its cycles. Right, and perhaps his comments were also taken out of line. Perhaps that, that's not what was implied. Perhaps. Yeah, you know, I think he might have meant if you buy a 10 ounce gold bar yeah. that it doesn't have any, uh, you know, <laughs> purchasing, not purchasing power, but intrinsic value from, from the perspective of value. But, uh, you know, he didn't mention that you could buy gold stocks, such as uh, some of the senior mining producers do pay dividends. So there are other ways to invest in the precious metals markets that do give you returns. All right, Peter, let's get back to your background a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us how you started in a business, when you started. Well, I came out of University of Toronto uh, in 1974. I started my career in the foreign exchange business, and then in 1976, I became the uh, senior vice president for a trust company called Guardian Trust Company, uh, located in Montreal, but I was uh, headquartered in Toronto. And uh, Guardian Trust grew into the largest retail and wholesale precious metals dealer in North America by 1990 before they were sold to uh, Laurentian Bank. Right, and now you lead the precious metals division for Kitco Metals. That's correct. Kitco is uh, the largest retail uh, supplier of uh, metals in North America. We have logistics capability throughout the world. Uh, obviously, we have offices not only here, uh, logistics offices in New York, but we have offices in Hong Kong and Shanghai. And uh, we do a significant amount of precious metals volume on a daily basis. Is there any mistake that you would say is the biggest one that investors tend to make? Well, I tend to ask investors why they're buying gold. It's not so much should they buy gold, but why. And when I ask them that question, I also ask them, what type of gold are you looking to buy? Uh, there's many people that buy or think they should be buying physical gold bars. And, you know, I, I have a real issue with that because you're paying very high premiums. If you're a trader and you're looking for capital gains, that's probably the most ineffective way of investing in the gold market. If you're worried about privacy or if you're worried about government intervention or government confiscation of your gold, physical gold makes sense. But then you have to ask yourself the question, if you're worried about, for example, the U.S. government right. confiscating gold, why in your, in your wildest dreams would you buy gold for delivery into the United States or store it in the United States? Then you would want to be looking at geographical diversification and Canada comes to mind as one of the better countries to hold your gold in. Right. Well, Peter, on that note, I look forward to seeing you every week on For Pete's Sake. Thanks for being with me today. Great. It'll be my pleasure. And Thank you, you can email me any comments or questions you may have for Peter at newsfeedback at For Kiko News, I'm Daniela Cambonin. <laughs>